Okay, here it goes. Here comes another update on my scientific blog. Uh, the blog Discover Social Sciences. And uh, this time uh, there are two novelties to my blog or to my video blogging. First of all, I'm testing new equipment, so if the sound comes as a little bit strange, it is just the fault uh, of me not knowing how to deal with that new equipment. And secondly, after uh, like two weeks of posing, I am returning to blogging about my personal investment strategy. Uh, when I restarted blogging, like by the end of January, I announced that I want to use my blog, so writing and publishing, as a personal strategy of learning uh, or relearning good strategies of investing in the stock market. Of course, back in the day when I was starting it, so by the end of January, the world was different. Uh, I mean that uh, the COVID uh, panic in the or the coronavirus panic in the stock markets was not there yet. When I was starting to build my investment portfolio, uh, the financial markets just looked different. And uh, then it all changed. And uh, it all changed for me too, as for my own investment strategy. I had to, uh, re to rethink and to revise my strategies like from the most fundamental assumptions. The first question was if I want to keep investing in the stock market at all. Because just to remind you, my earlier post, my personal strategy is the following. I, am, I have an apartment for rent downtown uh, I, and my strategy is simply to invest every month the rent collected from that apartment in the stock market. And the question that I was asking myself those last days was, is it worth huh? And now one of the markets where I have my investment positions just gave me an answer by itself. Uh, in Poland, every company closely or just remotely connected to anything medical or biotechnological is just like a crazy roller, uh, a crazy roller coaster on the way up. Huh? Just to give you an example, uh, last Friday, so Friday, like one, uh, one week earlier, I bought some stock of a Polish company, Biomed Lublin. It is a biotech company, but it is nothing big. Huh? Uh, declaratively, they work with vaccine and bioserums, but so far they have been known, mostly, for having failed lamentably on developing uh, uh, a synthetic uh, blood serum, a synthetic human blood serum uh, for people who suffer from hemophilia. And long story short, I bought their shares uh, last Friday, so, so one full week of trading earlier. And uh, as for the end of this Friday, as for the end of Friday, April the 3rd, over one week of trade, even less than one, a completely full week of trade, I had like 331% of profit on that position. It is crazy. And it is the same on all the other companies connected to the medical sector, to medical equipment. Even those which are just remotely or indirectly connected, like companies which trade wood. Wood means cellulose and cellulose means toilet paper, which is being uh, compulsively hoarded by part of the population now. So in this update, I am returning to blogging and discussing about my personal investment strategy. And here is, first of all, I describe the decision that I was struggling with and that I made. And then I will try to play a little bit with the scientific and philosophical background of that decision. So here comes the decision. I had like two portfolios. 
in my investment strategy. One portfolio in the Polish market, uh, which is right now more and more focused on biotech companies because they grow like hell. And I had an international portfolio, which I acquired and held uh, by the intermediary of a trading platform called the Giro. And uh, I was seeing like two different pictures, two different games being played in those two portfolios. In Poland, it grows like hell in the biotech sector, and it is logical. Hmm? Uh, when we have a crisis which is pertinent to health, to healthcare, to vaccines, to drugs, it is normal then uh, that investors move their interest and their money towards uh, positions related to those technologies. Uh, but in the international portfolio, which I mostly have um, in, the, uh, uh, in the American market, in the, uh, in the US market, and where I have, well, had, to biotech companies, even these, even the biotech companies in the United States didn't really grow. It was a kind of a hesitant, bumpy road, one day up, one day down. And I had that impression that I played two different games. One game in Poland where I more or less understand the rules, or at least I understand the basic rules and another game being played in the international market where I didn't understand at all uh, what is happening, why this market is so stagnant. Uh, when I read that the American government released that huge stimulation package for the economy, which is practically the size of the American federal budget like 10 years ago, same in Germany, why the hell doesn't it grow? I didn't understand the rules of the game. So I decided to reduce my cognitive dissonance by selling out everything I have in the international portfolio, move the money to Poland, to my Polish investment account, and pump it into the biotech companies. Of course, there are risks. That wave of growth on biotech companies in Poland could end quite quickly, just as it started very quickly. And my main question right now is, uh, is it just technical growth or fundamental growth? For those who are not really familiar with the jargon of the stock market, my question is the following. Is that growth in value of, uh, of companies connected to biotechnology and medical equipment? Is it just a growth provoked by the sentiments of investors? Is it just that people are willing to pay a growing price for those shares? Because other people, like the day before, were willing to pay a growing price? Or is it, or is it something deeper? Is it like a movement of capital towards the sectors which are like really very needed right now in the economy? and in our healthcare system because our in the presence of those pathogens like uh, that coronavirus covid-19 and any other that can turn up good biotechnology uh, uh, good biotechnology i'm sorry good healthcare and good supply chain of medical equipment is just vital it is important for our survival so it would be logical to move towards those sectors. But I'm not sure what kind of growth we have now in the Polish stock market. Is it more technical or more fundamental? This is very much what I am thinking about right now. And uh, in the update that I am placing on my blog together with this video being placed on YouTube, I play a little bit with all the theory when I am in a tight spot intellectually, so when I don't really know which way to go, I like uh, going back to the classics. And as for uncertainty and risk, the classics for me are the classics of statistics and the classics of probability. Intuitively, I thought about those two seminal books, uh, 
One is that essay in the Doctrine of Chances by Abraham de Moivre, published for the first time in 1756. And the second one is that strange paper, that article published essentially posthumously uh, and written by Reverend Thomas Bias. It was published in, uh, in 1763. So the treaty written by Abraham de Moivre is supposed to have given rise to what we call today the classical statistics or the Laplace de Moivre statistics, uh, those based on the law of big numbers. And this is essentially the thing that we all learned uh, at school when we were doing uh, uh, probabilities in the class of mathematics. So a sort of you throw a coin 1,000 times and how many times you have tails and how many times you have heads. That's the Moivre. And uh, Thomas Bayes, his paper is supposed to be the seminal paper of what we call today Bayesian statistics. And Thomas Bayes essentially started from the assumption that uh, usually when we deal with real events, with really uncertain outcomes of our actions, we don't have the opportunity to throw a coin 1,000 times. Huh? So we don't really have many trials. We have to explore reality and we have to make sense of it. And to those two classics, so to the writings of Abraham de Moivre and to those of Thomas Bayes, I added one more thing, really, really older, and I mean eating the Chinese Book of Changes. Uh, you know that thing with uh, three grams and hexagrams made of those traits. Huh? It is essentially uh, an approach to probability and statistics just from another angle. And it is very ancient because allegedly it was being written and, re and rewritten by many people, many authors in ancient China, like during the last millennium before Christ. And when I was reading those three, so the Book of Changes, the treaty by Abraham de Moivre, and the essay, that article by Thomas Bias, I came to the conclusion that the basic thing about probability and about statistics is that we acknowledge more or less the fact that uh, reality is chaotic to us, that stuff outside is chaos. Huh? What we know in the first place, uh, is that in that chaos, in that chaotic stuff, there are states of nature that we like, that we even thrive when we are in, and conversely, there are uh, states of nature which we don't really like, huh? and which can be even dangerous or noxious to us. And this is the basic or the most fundamental assumption of uh, statistics. There is stuff we like, there is stuff we don't like, and how to predict which one is going to happen to us in the predictable future. And as I was reading those books, I could notice like three different manners of structuring reality. And I was asking myself, which uh, way of structuring am I in with my decision of wrapping up all my investment positions in the international market and moving money back to Poland? I think that I was reducing my cognitive dissonance. Uh, so, in the first place, I was playing the kind of probability game that Abraham de Moivre would play. So, uh, I was trying to, to check if I understand the rules of the game I am playing. And I intuitively withdrew my resources from the game which I didn't understand. Uh, or from another point of view, if it was approached from the logic or from the angle proposed by Thomas Bias, I was delimiting the boundaries of my acceptable reality, the reality that I want to play in. Anyway, these are like loose thoughts. Uh, you can, if you click on the link below the video, uh, and it is, by the way, the same link that you have displayed under me speaking, like here on the screen. Uh, you can go to my scientific blog, Discover Social Sciences, and there you will find an update, 
a written update which has the same title as this video on YouTube. So you go there and you will find like a more written development on that thing. And uh, one more thing, just one last crazy thing. First I show you and then I explain you my thinking. Okay, above me you can see pictures of my handwriting written with two different hands. So you can see that uh, like over those masks uh, on the wall behind me, you can see uh, this is my right hand writing. This is a piece of writing which I wrote with my right hand. I don't know if I was born right-handed, but certainly I was raised and educated as a right-handed kid. Still, for some years now, I have been practicing for fun and for personal development, writing with my left hand as well. And uh, over like that door corner, so on, the, on, on your right essentially, you have a piece, a picture of what my left hand writing looks like. And here is a funny thing. In graphology, we assume that uh, our handwriting reflects our personality. You can see that my handwriting, written with the two different hands, has very different shapes. Does it mean that it expresses two different personalities in me? Funny question. I'll, I will try to think about it more and do some research about it. Okay, that would be all for today. Thank you very much. Have a nice Sunday. And generally, cheer up. Okay?